Racism is undoubtedly uh, an issue in the workplace and I think that there are uh, insufficient legislation really to allow people to uh, tackle that racism that they receive. I think what's happened to our legislation over the you know the last few decades that it's become like a really individualized way of getting justice so people have to go to like an employment tribunal if they're lucky enough to get legal aid which you know very much doesn't exist for people now in the workplace and um, and you know so it's a, an individualized way of realizing your rights in the face of injustice and actually I think that's inadequate it's especially inadequate when you're talking about racism and uh, and all of the other oppressive behaviors that might exist in the workplace I think trade unions are in a very unique position however to be able to represent their members in lieu of there not being uh, a robust legal aid system in lieu of the tribunal system being inadequate for people to get justice the trade union rep can be there and can be getting uh, you know if, if, if they understand the principles behind what a racist this incident is, if they are being brave enough to have conversations about what is or what isn't racism, brave enough to have conversations about uh, language that might be racist and why it might be racist and the historical reasons it might be racist, actually it might prevent ever having to get to that point because people are just much more aware of how their words, how their language can impact other people. I think, uh, well, you know, a Labour government would do two things and I'll start with like the the, the big stuff because there's very practical stuff isn't there and then there's a systemic stuff which uh, lessens the propensity for the environment to be ripe for racism so for example in my own uh, area of responsibility I'm going to be in charge of the Ministry of Labour uh, should there be a Labour government and at the beaten heart of that department will be sectoral collective bargaining and that kind of rolls off the tongue but what does it really mean? Well it's about entire sectors uh, coming to the table with their representative trade unions, uh, a compulsion for the employers to meet them at that table and to negotiate the terms and conditions and fundamentally pay and why will that reduce racism because it seems a bit of a disconnect but it will reduce racism because we are in a situation at the moment where exploitative employers use migrant labour to essentially pay a cheaper wage. So, you know, I'm not having it that migrants drive down wages. No, it's exploitative bosses that drive down wages. And what sectoral collective bargaining will do is whether you are a Polish worker, whether you are a worker from Concert, where I represent, you will be paid the same rate and you will be welcome in this country and you will be welcome at any workplace and you will be on the same rate because there will also be an enforcement regime if exploitative employers refuse to pay the same rate because we're in the ludicrous situation at the moment where you've got some night shift workers that are all migrant labour because the, the night shift rate is so inadequately poor and then the day shift is all British workers that segregated workplace we can't end up in that situation and so part of sectoral collective bargaining will not just be about what people are paid in the breaks but night rates night shift rates night allowances and and you know many 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 other areas so essentially what i'm saying is that the like the the big stuff that we can do is make sure that everyone is paid uh, equally and secondly that everyone has day one rights because what we know is uh, employers quite often use migrant labor on short-term contracts uh, so that they never get the realization of their rights uh, which is a, a huge problem so day one rights will have a transformative effect again doesn't matter where you're from you are welcome here and you will have the same terms and conditions and in that sense of solidarity that we're all really in this together uh, and the exploitative employers aren't able to undercut using uh, migrant labor I think that does dissipate racism because I've seen disputes in the past where it's overpay and people can very easily fall into the trap that, oh, you know, they're stealing our jobs or they're stealing our jobs because they're prepared to work for less. Well, that's a nonsense that, you know, I understand why it's fe that's felt, but the emphasis has to be on these people who are prepared to pay people below what it is to actually live a good life. Uh, that, that, that they're prepared to do that and the Labour government will clamp down on that but then of course like, individually um, 
We think that the Equality Act is good. Uh, it's, it's, you know, certainly a, a good piece of legislation. We won't be repealing the Equality Act, but we have to strengthen how that's implemented. So the legislation exists, but currently it's just not enforced effectively. And so we need to make sure everybody knows that those rights exist, knows what the protected characteristics are, and knows how to realise them. I have a personal uh, I suppose soft spot for show racism, the red card, because I worked for this organisation for eight and a half years, I think it was. In my mind, that time keeps expanding, but you know, I worked for them for, for a good amount of time and it was an incredible organisation, not just personally because of the opportunities it gave me to be in unbelievable situations where intense dialogue took place that actually elicited change, where people ended their workshops not having some of the racist ideas that they had before. I mean, imagine being in that situation unbelievable but because they do this day in day out they have really difficult conversations with thousands and thousands and thousands of people and and they create change and you know if if now is not the time to have such an organization in schools and in workplaces then when is because the far rise are on you know far right are on the rise the conditions are there for racist ideas to be fer fertilised in communities and then captured upon by these charismatic leaders. We need to be putting out those fires constantly and show racism the red card is a perfect organisation to do that.